kindly let us enter into that place of worship. As the angels cry, holy, holy, holy. We can cry, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Worthy are you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. The Lord our God is good. Yes, he is. Greatly to be praised. We honor and adore him this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, that he allows us to go into a place of worship where the cares of this world can just fall off and there's nothing but you and him. Everything else that you brought in is, can just fall to the ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Galatians 6 and 9 says, and let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Praise God. <clears throat> Regardless of what we're going through, he says don't grow weary. Regardless of what man may say, don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. His word still stands. He is still God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear God, we pray for every leader in our churches around the world. Give them your wisdom and discernment as they lead. We pray that their hearts would be directed first to you, that they would recognize where their true help and strength comes from. We ask that you would guard they're coming and they're going, that you would be the refuge and their peace. We pray that you would surround each one with the wise counsel, that they will be humble and kind, patient and loving through the actions of their words. We pray that their faith in you would be unwavering. We pray for their families, Give them great strength, protection, and grace for the days ahead. We ask that you will continue to pave the way for the strong and faithful men and women who serve you. We are asking for your outpouring of the Holy Ghost to raise up those that you have chosen in this last hour. In Jesus' name. We ask you, Lord God, that only you can change the hearts of men so that their eyes can turn unto you. You are the author and the finisher of our faith, and nothing and no one can change that. God, you are worthy, you are loving, and you are kind. We pray for the grace of God to go over this nation, cover the earth like the waters cover the sea, I pray that in the name of Jesus, the matchless name of Jesus, that name that every man on heaven and earth will bow because you are King of kings and Lord of lords. God, I pray today that you dispatch your angels around this place, that this is a safe place. This is a safe place. I thank you and I praise your name. Jesus. No other name that man can be saved except the name of Jesus. I won't apologize for my emotions this morning because I needed him. You know, sometimes you run to the Father and you just ask that he embrace you, that he holds on to you. I needed him this morning like never before. Amen. You know, sometimes the enemy comes and he wants you to take down. Yeah. He tells you that what you're doing isn't vain. He tells you that the people are not listening. 
They're worried about the distractions in the nation right now. But I tell you today, Jesus is still real. He is the one and only way. He is still the healer. He's still the deliverer. And he's here to set you free today. In the name of Jesus. Oh, his love is still everlasting. No matter what we preach, you got to go back to his love. Because to know God is to know love. Because God is love. It's a day and time when we can only trust the true and the living God. Because every other God, every other idol will fall. But it's only Jesus. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You know, we, we go to God each time, and, and I probably say it more than most. God, what are we going to say today? What are we going to say today? God, the people are complaining, and they're murmuring, and they're, and they're divided. God, what are we going to say today? God, those that are supposed to be sisters and brothers in Christ, God, what are we going to say today? We're losing souls. Because the church is distracted. We're losing souls. Because the church is distracted. That's what God says to me. I came Wednesday night to, uh, to film the live stream for the speaker. And uh, thank God it was only a few of us here. <laughs> you might say that's strange, but he placed people in your life for a reason. So Wednesday night, I thought I was coming for one job, but he was sending me here because he had a word for me. Oh, Deborah did an awesome job. I thought about it all week. I said, Deborah did an awesome job. I was telling others. And, and so when I came in the door, and, and Teresa was the first one that we normally meet, but Teresa was in there and she said, I, I kind of, if I can say it differently, she said I, I needed to say something or I wanted to say something, but maybe I shouldn't. And then she said, she said, basically her heart was hurting because souls were being lost and, and where is the church? And I kind of laughed and I said, okay, God, I hear you, I hear you. And then Deborah came up and, and gave the word about where is the church? <laughs> In the midst of what's going on, where is the church? And I said, okay, God, I got your point. <laughs> Although I might want to speak on something else, you wanted me to talk about the church. <laughs> it don't take but much to knock me upside the head. <laughs> so he had to do all of that. But not to talk about the church in a bad way. Oh, no, God's church is not bad. Because, see, we are the church. And if we are the church, then we can't be bad because our God is not bad. He's good. Matter of fact, he's great. And if we are in him, then we're great in him. But there's times when things come up, especially like now, that we've been in global crisis before, but this one to me, maybe I'm older and I'm paying more attention to the words and the things that I see. But, but, there's always going to be wars and rumors of wars because the word said so. And then there's going to be diverse temptations because the word said so. But the thing that concerns my heart and the thing that I talk to God about is, but we're not supposed to be like the world. If there's crisis in the world, the church is supposed to be strong. If there's people falling by the wayside, the church is supposed to be strong. Because we know the man. We know the God of all creation. We're supposed to be stronger than the world. But we're falling for the things of the world. to be mindful. Help me, Lord, to watch this tongue. You can't hate your sister and brother, and no matter how you want to 
perform it or put it, and then come Sunday say that you're God's chosen. You can't curse the church and the people of the church one day, and then Sunday you're in the choir. Come on, church. Yes. There are people are dying because we're living a life that is not of Jesus. John said he wasn't even worthy to tie his shoes, but we can come and destroy that that he has made and hate, distrust our words. Where is the love? Souls are dying because the church has forgotten about the love of God. The Holy Spirit that he says will teach us all things it tells you when you're saying something wrong. It tells me when I'm about to say something wrong and I have to correct that thing. Or when there's a feeling of offense that comes about, the Holy Spirit will say, oh, you offended. You need to get it right. You need to ask for forgiveness. See, the Holy Spirit has not left the earth. He's still here because we need him. But it's more than we need a daily encounter with God's spirit, we need to live the life that God has given us in Christ. So that, so that those that may not know us can see Christ in us, the hope of glory. <clears throat> Where is the church? God took me to a place that I usually don't travel, and it's in the book of Revelation. Revelation. <laughs> we add that S. For some reason, I don't know. I guess because there's a lot of books. But but I was like, okay, God, I'm not a scholar, the old theologian. I, how, how do I? You just read what I want you to read. You write what I want you to write. It ain't about you, no way, Levada. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> See, because we, we think we're spiritual when we can take something out of the Bible and use it to hit somebody, and then we're more popular because we prophesy the word. All wars are coming, I told y'all. All this virus, you know, is sent from the devil to kill all the Christians. Always trying to stop us from talking. Always trying to do this and is trying to do that. But where is the church? That's right. The enemy cannot stop that belongs to God. And the sooner we realize it, then we would not be trying to bash each other, but we would try to love each other. Because I say today there are souls that are watching the church and the way that we worship God and believe God and call upon God and speak the things of God in love, they're saying, oh, that, that must be what I need. Because in my fear, because I don't know God, I need to go to somebody who's not fearful. But if we're trying to wreak havoc so that we can look good, so we can prophesy the best, or we have the best message, but if your message is not turning people to Christ, then your message is wrong. See, the Bible says we need to edify the church, not destroy the church. We can't keep pulling away. People are watching us. One says one thing, one says another, but we all got the same Bible. Mm -hmm. Seek the Lord while he may be found. It's not to be used to make yourself look good. Everything in the Bible is so that everyone can turn their eyes to Jesus. Not to send fear to the nation. Not to send fear to the world. Tell them about Jesus. The one who's coming. The one who loves them and adores them. The one who, who promised them everlasting life. Point them to Jesus. Not to the things of this world. See, the revelations to me when I was growing up was one of those scary books that people talked about because it had all the faces of man and this and the other, and I didn't understand it. I still don't, to be honest with you. But, but I know that in the church, it's not a book that, that, that we use to, 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 to teach and to train. It's not a book that we use really to correct in the scriptures, as we do Romans and Corinthians. We use those more often to kind of get the church in line. 
But what, what, what God wanted me to see in the book of Revelations was the holiness of God. The everlasting Savior. That's what he kept pointing to. Holy, holy, holy is he. And be ye holy, for I am holy. He's not looking for us to pick sides. Because we're all in this battle together. Oh, but I don't feel like it. I could be wrong, somebody correct me. But I don't feel like I'm in this battle with the saints. Because everybody's pulling in a different direction. Point us to Jesus. You know, with, with all the, uh, what do you call it, uh, sheltering in place, you know, there's been opportunities to go out door to door to witness or witness in a crowd or, or a witness one to the other because everybody's being careful and being mindful because if you love someone, you will protect someone. Amen? So, but understand that, you know, Deb mentioned the other week and um, that she has a young lady that she does one-on-one -on -one ministry with. I said, God, you're still doing... See, it doesn't matter how we minister as long as we minister Christ. Not division, but Christ. Because if he's telling us to pray for those who despitefully use us, you can't pray for somebody and hate them too. So he's telling us to pray for those that are different than us, that are doing something we don't understand that, that might offend us from time to time. He says pray for those that despitefully use you and watch your heart change. Watch you go from hate to love. Watch the compassion that Christ had becomes your compassion. He said, pray for those. Not destroy them. Not curse them. Pray for them. So we are all God's children. That's what they say. We are all God's children. But God is not the one with the problem. It's us. He doesn't have a problem loving. He's trying to teach us how to love. Unconditionally. See, Revelation is... A story of the devil, Lucifer, trying to conquer the church. Now, the word says, choose this day who you will serve. So either you're going to fight the battle to save the church and the souls that God had told you to go get, or you're going to destroy the church and then Satan is your father. Choose this day who you will serve. The church in Revelations, we're overcomers. But in this time, in this nation, what are we trying to overcome? That you're right and, and I'm wrong, or, or I'm right and, and, and you're wrong? But where's the church? See, it's not about me being right, it's about me praying. It's not about me being right, it's about me loving. So when you get into a situation where you have to decide, well, is that one right? Do I follow him? Or is that one right? Do I follow? No, follow Jesus. That's right. Because everything else will fall. Yes. Hmm. Right. See, what we have to do and decide to be is in Christ. Yep. In Christ. And, and, and that means that we can no longer see ourselves in imperfection because he sees us in righteousness because we're in Christ. We're in the Bible. And in Christ, our, his, our sin debt has been paid, has been canceled. So he took me over in Revelation to understand you can be a conqueror, but you have to be in my son. Because no one comes to the Father unless they come by him. So if I am in Christ, then my relationship has to look like Christ. My relationship can't look like the world. My conversation can't be like the world. Oh, it may hurt. Oh, it may offend. But Jesus said, you're going to be offended. You know, the great thing about our God is he warns you before you even go through it. But it's up to you to listen. Oh, I tell you, I would wish not to go through another trial the rest of my days. I, I, would, I would definitely wish not to go through it. But I'm going to have to go through because I'm going to have to show the world that I'm going to come out on the other end. Yes, yes. 
But I have to be in Christ because that's where my debt was paid. No other way can your debt be paid out of sin unless you're in Christ and that your relationship to him is restored. And once that is restored, then you receive eternal life. And that's when Revelation says you get the victory. See, we may not look like we got the victory on this end. But, you know, a cliche we say a lot. I, I, I read the last chapter in the book and it says I win. Oh, but you got to get to that last chapter. And while you're trying to get to that last chapter, you have to do it in Christ. I have to be Christ-like all the time, not some of the time. I have to decide who I will serve regardless of what's going on around me. 1 John 5, 1 through 5 states, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one. I want that to sink in for a minute. Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one. If I have to lay down every title that I have in the church, it would be fine by me. Because as long as I know and understand that I am in Christ and he's the anointed one, then my home will be with him in paradise. See, it's not about my title, but it's in his title. He's the anointed one. He is born of God. And everyone who loves the father loves his child as well. Verse 2 says, this is how we know that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his commandments. In fact, this is the love for God to keep his commands and the commands are not burdensome. For it says, for everyone born of God who is in Christ overcomes the world. Everyone who is in Christ overcomes the world. So our fear is not that we're going to make it. Because the word even says to die is gain. Oh, so when I die, I get more than what I have now? Oh, yes. If you're in Christ. Now, if you die out of Christ, that's between you and him. But because it ain't my place to judge. But I'm just saying, but in Christ, to die is gain. Because the thing that I am pressing toward, as Paul says, the high mark, I'm pressing toward the place in God if I die I'm with him. It could be another greater place. But while I'm on this earth, I have to endure my trials, my tribulations. But I have to be mindful to stay in Christ and not step out of the borders. For everyone born of God who is in Christ overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Five says, who is that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Only the ones who believe that Jesus is the Son of God will overcome the world. So that in itself means that we have to do something so souls will not be saved during this time to let them know you need Jesus, if you're going to overcome, you need Jesus. I said before, we have to remember, Revelation is a story of the devil trying to conquer the church. But the church overcomes the devil and the world because she belongs to the Lord who has won us the victory. He has won us victory as long as we stay in him and we have the victory why because we are in Christ the anointed one matter of fact the only one Revelation 5 1 through 5 says then I say in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals and I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scrolls? 
But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scrolls or even look inside it. I wept and I wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scrolls or look inside. In this time, in this season, in this era that we're in, can God find you worthy? Can God find you worthy? He says, I've already given you the victory. I've already overcame the world. Now I need you. But five goes on and says, then one elder says to me, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, come on church, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scrolls and its seven seals. And why? Because he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the Almighty God. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Wonderful Counselor. He's the Everlasting Father. See, that's what we do when we tell somebody about Jesus. They don't want to really want to know about your life because they see how you're living. So tell them about a man named Jesus who died for their sins so that they could overcome the world. That, that gave them victory even before they were born. Tell them about Jesus. That's what the church needs to do. Not talk about doctrine. Not talk about who's right and who's wrong. If you can't tell them about Jesus, then it's time to close the doors. Because he's the only one that matters. He's the only one that matters. He's the only one that died for your sins. He's the only one that can come back and take you to the Father. So why is everything else more important than Jesus? He's the Alpha and Omega, the Almighty One, the beginning and the end, the Prince of Peace, the Wonderful Counselor, the Everlasting Father. That's Jesus. And to be in him, Mean you have all those to yourself. To be in him. So in him, we as believers are more than conquerors. Romans 8 31. Oh, every time we go through a battle, oh, we may fret in the beginning because sometimes he'll take us through a trial and we forget when it's time for the second trial that he took me through that, he'll bring me through this. Romans 8 and 37 says we are more than conquerors to them that are in Christ. Stay in Christ. We are more than conquerors. You know, we need to understand that we will triumph and not be trampled. They, they can't take this away from me because he's given it to me. He's the only one that was able to open the seals. The devils come to destroy the church. We are the warriors of Christ who stand at the door and not allow him to destroy that that God has given us, and that's including our bodies. To know that we are overcomers in Christ. That's the good news that we need to share with the world right now. That's the good news we need to be telling people right now. We need to bring it back to where the beginning started. Leave this other stuff alone. Let it fall to the ground. You think it'll do you any good? You can't decide who's going to be where anyway. The only thing that we have authority over is to tell people about Christ. That's the only truth that we know. The good news of Jesus Christ. Oh, if you can think back to the day that you were saved. Think back to the transformation. People don't really believe that God can actually transform you from that person to this person. You know, he says that the old things pass away and all things become new. I remember the old elevator. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I remember that person. And sometimes, you know, things will flash before your eyes. And I said, oh, God, I don't believe I did that. <laughs> Why you let me do that? Why you didn't save me before that? But, but he said, old things are passed away and all things have become new. That's what he does. Yeah. 
And I remember going to the altar and giving my life to Christ, not realizing at that time that greater things was coming. See, I thought I had to hold on and make the money and, and do the things myself because that's what I thought was good. Oh, but now I know something great. <laughs> I know something greater than money. The man that when you're doing bad can, can correct your credit score without even trying. You know, even when you think there's not food in the cabinet, oh, he can point you through the cabinet with a, oh, y'all know Stanley favorite thing. <laughs> but you still get to eat. Oh, and when there's not enough gas in the car, somebody willing to come pick you up. See, I'm talking about a man that can do, those are small things. I'm talking about a man that can put you in a position that you did not deserve and still get you accolades. I'm talking about a man when the doctors didn't understand why you were yet standing, he had healed your body. I'm talking about Jesus. Oh, yes, he's still a healer. Oh, he's still a deliverer. Oh, he's still the one that we call on in the late hours of the night. I'm talking about Jesus. Revelations 21 and 3 says, And I heard a loud voice. You know that amazes me in Revelation. Y'all, please, because y'all know I got a tone <laughs> of my own. But you know, I, I, I'm a loud person. Okay, I ain't going to apologize for it. But I, I love it when I read and it say, with a loud voice. <laughs> Somebody who's not ashamed to speak the word of God. Somebody who's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. With a loud voice. Yes. Proclaim who he is today. With a loud voice. Whew. I know I won't be standing in heaven. I'm going to be one of those people with a loud voice. <laughs> Saying holy, holy, holy is he. Worthy of our praise and our honor and our glory to God. Y'all will see me by the throne. Just holler at me. So, so 21 and 3 says, And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. The church shall dwell with him, and they shall be his people. God will be with them and be their God. For says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Thank you, Lord, because I just can't stop. <laughs> he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and they shall be no more deaf, no sorrow, no crying. That's why Paul says to die is gain. <laughs> there shall be no more pain nor the former things have passed away. Five says, then he who sat on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, write, for these words are true and they are faithful. He that sits on the throne, you know, there's another passage in, in Revelation where Jesus says, you know how I sit by the Father, I'm going to let you sit by me. Ooh. Glory be to God. If all this is what we're doing is just to see his face, oh, can you imagine when he calls your name? Oh, thy good and faithful servant, enter in. That's what it's all about. Thou good and faithful servant. And he said unto me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Oh, that's what we're working for. That's what we're living for. That's why we have to stay in him. That's why we don't want to error. That's why we don't want this world to take our eyes off of Jesus. That's why we don't want to choose to be in the world. We want to be out of the world. So that God can say to you, you're my son. You're my daughter. Enter in. Oh, the glory of the God. Now we know the 21 and 8 starts with those things where those who are not in Christ need to get right because if they don't, they're going to go to you nowhere. 
But understand, if we don't tell them of their sins or what they're doing wrong, if we, the church, takes our focus on top of saving souls and, and, and let hell enlarge itself even larger, then where is the church? What is our job? What does he need us to do? Go into all the world, preach the gospel, tell them about Jesus. Let souls be saved. Let them know that God still loves them. Let them know that God is good. Let them know that God is a healer, that he's a deliverer, and that he wants them, a relationship with them. It's not a time to be selfish and it's all that's on my own and not anybody else. Oh, no. It's for every man that will believe. We as the church play a huge role in getting believers and unbelievers refocus on winning the victory for Christ. Regardless of the noise and the distraction, those that are in Christ cannot sink to the level of hating your sister and your brother, regardless of who they are, where they're from, and what they're doing. We cannot sink to that level. We have to stay in Christ. God has to know that the love that his son had for us is going to go into all this earth. We have to let go of the noise and the distraction of this world. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Love those who despitefully. It's not easy. I'm not saying that it is. But if God told us to do it, he will help us do just that. He has given you the best arsenal that you have in the Holy Spirit if you just listen to him. We can't continue being so busy fighting each other, trying to decide who's right and who's wrong. We have to remember that as children of the Most High God, as Christians as we call ourselves, or to be Christ-like, we're in this battle together. And we're fighting one enemy, and that's the devil. Give no place to the devil. We're in this battle together. And if you love me and I love you, I'm going to fight with you. I'm not going to let the enemy come in and take those that God has put in my view, in my place, in front of me, those that God has given us. We can't let them fall, regardless of who they are. We don't think alike. We have different opinions. Oh, boy, do we have opinions. <laughs> but, but let the opinions go. Go back to the word. Find the truth. Yes. Ask God, is this how you want me to be? Yes. Is this what you want me to do? Yes. Let the opinions of man fall to the ground. Every imagination that tries to exalt itself above God, let it fall to the ground. Stop listening to the opinions and go back to God. Back when we first got saved and nobody can tell you that Jesus wasn't the bomb deity. Nobody. Everything was Jesus. Oh, I felt brand new. Like somebody had took, my mama called it potash when you want to clean your skin. It's like somebody had took potash and washed me clean. I didn't feel the same way. I, I was a new creature in Christ. And so are you. A new creature in Christ. Oh, you may say, but Levada, I messed up yesterday. That's okay, baby. That's what grace is for. Oh, but I didn't do what he told me to, to do. Oh, that's what forgiveness is for. See, I told you, he warned you. Anything that you run into, I have the answer for it. It's in the book. Yes. Open the book. Yes. I, I, I read a funny post, y'all don't mind me saying um, I'm probably not going to say it right because I'm not good at jokes and things like that. But, but it said that the preacher came to uh, one of the partitioner's house for dinner and, and they had dinner and had good fellowship. And, and when he left and the wife was, I guess, cleaning the dishes and if she set a table for three but she only had two spoons, she asked her husband, did the preacher steal my spoon? <laughs> because she knows she put down three but did the, the, the preacher steal my spoon? And so later on at another time she 
invited them back. I guess she was going to ask them. I don't know. But she invited them back to the house for dinner. And, and she got up a nerve to ask the man, uh, when you was here the last time, did you by any chance take my spoon? <laughs> and the pastor said, no. I put it in your Bible. So anyway, if you have a question, go to the book. Go to the book. So understanding that Matthew 28 says, Come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from me. Learn. See, that's the only way you can be in Christ if you first learn of who he is. And then once you learn of who he is, then he gives you that time to understand what he needs you to do. He says, learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oh, don't think of it. Well, it's a struggle. Don't think of it like that. Think of that I'm trying to please the master. Thinking that what I'm doing is because I love the master. Thinking about what I'm doing is because he deserves all of me. And what he gives me back is a burden that is light. So remember in Matthew 20 and 1 it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a lawn owner who went out early in the morning to hire workers from his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them in, into the vineyard. Y'all know the story. So he sent them all out, and, he, and each time when they came, he gave them a different amount of money. But, but, but when you go back and look at what God has said to us, he said, I say, come to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So he promised to give us this because he knew we was going to need this in these times. Don't struggle, he says. Don't fret, he says. I will give you rest. Just like those that are hired, see, the journey is not over. See, until, this, until he comes back and take us away, or until you lay down for the last time and we look over your, until then, we still have work to do. So he says, don't be weary and well-doing because you still have work to do. Until it's over, you can't stop. Oh, you might have missed the mark yesterday. But, but, but come unto me, he says. Come back each time you miss the mark. Come back to me, and I'll give you rest. And then what is he going to do? You know how, how a, a baby, those mothers, when the baby was trying to learn how to, how to walk, and they'll, they'll run to you, and they're stumbling, and then you get them. What you do? You turn around to somebody else, and you push them back, don't you? Go to daddy. Go. go, go. Just, just, when they get 18, it's like, just Go. But, but, but understand, he said, well, you missed the mark. Okay, come on to me. <laughs> I'm going to give you rest during this time. He said, but when I think you're rested, I'm going to turn you around and I'm going to push you back out. Because it's not over yet. The fight is not over. The enemy is still here. He's still trying. But God, Jesus, the Father, he's overcome the world. Yeah. Revelation 2 and 3 says in the Amplified, it says, I, and I know that you who believe are enduring patiently and are bearing up for my name's sake. Not for me, not for you, not for word of life salvation, for his name's sake. You are bearing up for me, he says, and that you have not grown weary of being faithful to the truth. But I have this charge against you, <laughs> that you have left your first love. You have lost the depth of love that you first had for me. You've lost your, see, if you still had your first love, this wouldn't, you know, this wouldn't wrestle you. This wouldn't ruffle your feathers. If you were still in the place of your first love, this wouldn't get you upset. You wouldn't be fighting each other because you would know who your first love was. But he said, I, 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 have, a, I have an art with you because 
you lost your first love. Mm -hmm. But 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 I'm gonna back up and say, but come back to me. But 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 come back to me. Oh, oh, you may you may have you know you may have failed, you, you may have stumbled, uh, uh, you may have tried to get up and walk and you wasn't ready, but come back to me. Those who are weary and, and, and laden and, 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 and those who, who talking about me and I'm talking about them. Oh, Y'all come on back to him. See, tensions may be high. Higher than high. Tensions may be high between now and then, between old and new, but no matter how bad it gets or even how good it gets, nothing compares to the glory that's going to come. Nothing that we're going through on this earth is going to compare to the glory of our God. Whether we're here doing the rapture and we see him come through the skies or whether we have gone on to glory through the ground, nothing compares, nothing you're going through compares to the victory in Christ that he says we will have and the glory that we will have when we're up there worshiping him. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, did I say nothing? Nothing compares to the glory. Nothing compares to the glory of our Father. And I want to hear him say, well done. I want to hear him say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Oh, he's not going to say, well, you didn't get it all right. No, he's going to say, well done. He's not going to say, well, you know, I sent you over there and you didn't go. No, he's going to say, well done. Because I told you earlier that the righteousness that he see over your life is because of the righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ. And if I stay in him, then he's going to say, well done. He's going to say, well done. So where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? And you know, I can say that to myself. Where do I go from here? I have the luxury of standing before you today. It's a luxury because anytime I can do something for the Lord, it's a luxury to me. But I have to, I have to leave those doors the same way I came in. After I said this to you. And the same way you got it, I got it. So where do I go from here? What is the Lord going to call me to? What is he going to call you to? And am I going to be obedient? He is such a good God. And as long as we stay in him, the, 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 my dad's uh, old church used to sing a song. Oh, hold on, I might miss it. A, a, a charge to keep I have and a God to glorify. See, if I was old school, I'd break out with that, but I, I, <laughs> Carolyn can do it though. A charge to keep I have and a God to glorify. Yeah. That's what we're called to do. Remember when you pray, remember souls. Let's cry out for souls. Let's cry out for the lost. That's why he sent us here. That's why we're here. To bring many souls to glory. And just because we're in a whatever you want to call it, don't mean we can stop. He said, you may go weary, you may bump your head, but we know we can come back to him. Let's bow our heads. Lord, I thank you. Dear God, we pray for your great healing of this land. Shine your face and your blessings over us. Give us courage to go into all the world and take the message of the gospel of peace. We need you now more than ever before. Our times are at hand. Thank you for you are the rich, that you are rich in mercy and full of grace. Thank you that you are forgiving and merciful. 
Thank you that you are strong and mighty. Thank you because of you, God, we stand today in Christ. Thank you that we're still ready to fight the fight today. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that we are aware of your words and we listen intensely to what you would have us to do when we leave these doors each and every day. Give us the courage to speak out. Help us not to stay silent, but to do all things through your wisdom and your love. Let us bring honor to your name. Because you alone, God, are worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. Cover this church. I pray. God, you said this is a safe place. We thank you for that, God. And we're trusting in the truth that you are the God that heals. You are the God that heals. Bless us as we leave in Jesus' name. Amen.